Good morning, church. I greet you and remind you that God's grace and peace are yours this day and forevermore. If you'll stand with me, let's join together in our call to worship. O oh Lord, open our eyes that we may see the needs of others. Open our ears that we may hear their cries. Open our hearts so that they may need not be without succor. Let us not be afraid to defend the weak because of the anger of the strong, nor afraid to defend the poor because of the anger of the rich. Show us where love and hope and faith are needed and use us to bring them to those places. And so open our eyes and our ears that we may this coming day be able to do some work of peace for thee. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Scripture reading this morning comes from Paul's writing to the church at Ephesus again. Uh, from the fourth chapter, beginning in verse 21, we hear this teaching. Since you really listened to Jesus and you were taught how the truth is in Jesus, change the former way of life that was part of the person you once were, corrupted by deceitful desires. Instead, renew the thinking in your mind by the Spirit and clothe yourself with a new person created according to God's image in justice and true holiness. Therefore, after you have gotten rid of lying, each of you must tell the truth to your neighbor because we are parts of each other in the same body. Be angry without sinning. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. Don't provide an opportunity for the devil. Now thieves should no longer steal. Instead, they should go to work using their hands to do good so that they will have something to share with whoever is in need. Don't let any foul words come out of your mouth. Only say what is helpful when it is needed for building up the community so that it benefits those who hear what you say. Don't make the Holy Spirit of God unhappy. You were sealed by him for the day of redemption. Put aside all bitterness, uh, losing your temper, anger, shouting, and slander, along with every other evil. Be kind, compassionate, and forgiving to each other in the same way God forgave you in Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite the younger children.
How are you guys? Were you, were you listening to the scripture? Mm. <laughs> It's kind of a, it's a good one. It's a good lesson, that I, the one that I just read, because it was about something we all have issues with, right? It was about anger. Do you, do you ever get angry? Yeah, me too. Yeah. And, and, and Paul, who, who writes um, some of his friends in a place called Ephesus, right? Kind of a funny name, Ephesus, but it's Greek, which might maybe why it sounds so strange to us. But he writes to them and, and says, okay, you, you learned about Jesus, right? And you learned good things about Jesus. And one of the things we, learned, uh, we all learn about Jesus is, is that we're to let go of the way we've done things before. So, for example, when we learn that sometimes our anger gets us in trouble, we learn not to let our anger go crazy again and get us in trouble in the future, right? So, says Paul, it's kind of like putting on new clothes, right? We can put on clothes that, that help protect us uh, from things like anger. Now, in the middle, in the middle of Paul's teaching, it's kind of strange because he starts out about talking about this new life we have in Jesus and talks about, you know, giving up our former ways, including anger. Um, and, and, and then in the end of his teaching, in the segment that I read, he, he, he reinstates this and says, you know, talks about anger again. But in the middle, he says something really weird. He says, thieves shouldn't steal anymore. Well, what's thieves have anything to do with anger? What's a thief? Somebody who steals. Them. We think of somebody with a mask, maybe. What else might they have? Maybe a flashlight, because usually when do they come around? Nighttime, when nobody can see them, so maybe they have a flashlight. And maybe they have a bag to put their things in, right? And maybe they have a bar so they can pry open a window or a door, right? We, we think of thieves this way. But, but I wonder if Paul was thinking of a different kind of thief, right? Because what happens when our anger causes us to... What if I got anger at you, Henry, and, and suddenly just hit you? That wouldn't be very good, would it? <laughs> no, it wouldn't, would it? What if you got angry at me and you socked me? Right? What would be happening? I, I think maybe what Paul was trying to also teach us is, is if we get angry with each other, right? If we get angry with each other, what's going to happen to our relationship? It's not, it's not going to be helped, is it? Now, now, it might be okay to be angry if, if one of us does something wrong, right? But what happens if we let that anger go too far and then suddenly we start socking each other? Can you, can you take that back? Once, once we've hit each other or something, you really can't take it back, can you? Yeah. And so, and so anger going too far is kind of like a thief stealing something. And what gets stolen is our relationship. So Paul says, okay, thieves shouldn't steal anymore. Instead, they need to do what? Go to work to do good things. So maybe when we get angry, we have to work really hard at that so we don't end up stealing from our relationships so that with our anger, we can do good things instead of terrible things, right? Because if I get so angry I want to <clears throat> beat something, there might be something else that I could do instead with all that energy and all that anger. I, I might be able to help fix whatever was wrong that caused me to be angry. I'm going to talk about that a little, a little bit more. In fact, I've got some pictures that, that will help us, especially as adults, all kind of figure this out, right? Because I think some of us might be angry even today over some things. And so it's important that we figure out, how do we take this energy of angry, and instead of trying to fight the world, how do we, how do we turn that anger into something that God would do? that Jesus would do. And, and we'll, we'll hope that the Spirit of God guides us in that. Yeah? Okay. Uh, should we say a prayer <laughs> that God helps us with our anger? Let's do that. Oh, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Spirit of Jesus is given to us as a gift. When we get anger, when it, when it really wells up in us, and <laughs> we just want to strike out, oh, God, pour your Spirit on us really heavily in those times so that it might melt our hearts just enough so we don't do something we would regret. But instead, Lord, help us take our anger and slow it down so that we can think about it a little bit and then take that energy to do a good thing. 
Uh, thank you, Lord, because we know this is what Jesus did, and he teaches us, even in our anger, how to be godly. Uh, so this is a gift to us today, and we want to thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hey, thanks for your help. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. May I invite us then to be together in prayer. May the Lord be with you. Let us pray together. O oh, gracious God, as we gather together for worship, we give you thanks and praise that we have this time to come and hear uh, your word uh, spoken, that we might open our hearts uh, to be renewed. Uh, Lord, you have uh, continuously been with us, for as Jesus was ascended into heaven, Lord, uh, he made the promise that he would always, always be with those who follow him. And so your spirit, which is poured out upon us, as it was that first generation, uh, continuously is with us, and we come to praise you and rejoice in, in, in this presence. Uh, now, Lord, keep us as we pray. Uh, hear our prayers uh, for those that we have lifted up this day, and from our hearts, perhaps things that are there uh, as unspoken yet, though, Lord, we know that you just hear them because you know our hearts, you know our minds. Lord, and your spirit prays for us with sighs and groans before the words are ever formed. Lord, as we hear and know your presence in this way, we rejoice. We rejoice because as you are present with us, uh, that transforms us, that changes us, that strengthens us, that renews us. That enables us, Lord, to live in ways we never thought possible as we live in Christ. Uh, Lord, for this is our prayer, and we make it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you'll stand, let's continue our praises as we make our offerings this day, both in prayer and in gift. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the gospel of Mark in the third chapter, and we hear uh, again this moment in Jesus' uh, ministry uh, as he is among the people and uh, finds an opportunity to teach by doing. Jesus returned to the synagogue. A man with a withered hand was there. Now, wanting to bring charges against Jesus, oh, they were watching Jesus closely to see if he would heal on the Sabbath. Well, Jesus said to the man with a withered hand, step up where people can see you. And then he said to him, is it legal on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save a life or to kill? But they said nothing. Looking around at them with anger, deeply grieved at their unyielding hearts, he said to them, uh, said to the man, rather, uh, stretch out your hand. Uh, so he did, and his hand was made healthy. At that, the Pharisees got together with the supporters of Herod to plan how to destroy Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. If you'll join with me as you're seated, uh, let's sing together, uh, help us accept each other. Accept each other as Christ accepted us. Teach us as sister, brother, each person to embrace. Be present, Lord, among us and bring us to believe. We are ourselves accepted and meant to love and live. Let your so that we may be moved in living situations to 
Oh, I love those lyrics. Man, I could just let those rumble around the rest of the day. Oh, here we are, continuing that whole uh, uh, saga of uh, looking afresh at the seven deadly sins, a concept that um, bubbled up out of uh, Christianity in the early centuries as some folks were trying to figure out how to follow Jesus more dearly, how to become Jesus for the world. And some folks realized that, you know, you can't just go to the Bible and use it like a cookbook, and if you do all these steps, boom, poof, you've got it. You know, it just doesn't work that simply. Life seems to be more complicated, and especially this human creature. Man, made in the image of God? <laughs> Talk about complication. Whew. And so we carry a lot of um, tendencies, um, if you will, desires that are really hard for us. And, and among the more obvious ones, I think, is anger. Uh, you probably wouldn't argue with me this morning, any of us, right, argue with each other uh, to suggest that, well, anger is sinful, right? And, and many of us as children, we learn this, right? We learn that, that, that anger's bad, except that maybe, maybe, maybe anger's not bad. Because as we heard a moment ago in the Scriptures, even Jesus was angry, and he, our Savior, was without sin. So, so maybe it's really not about the anger itself. Maybe it's about what comes out of the anger, right? Maybe it's what comes out of the anger. So, for example, here's a little bit of a test for us all. As I show you this image, right, <laughs> as I show you this image, um, this photograph was taken uh, just on Friday this week. Um, in one of the cities that hadn't yet been overrun in, in uh, uh, the Ukraine. Uh, in one of the cities there, is, there are some protesters uh, who are trying to bring attention um, in media forms aiming at, at the Russians because, you know, you realize in Russia all the media is heavily, heavily controlled by the state, right? So they're trying to, they're trying to get news off to the brothers and sisters in Russia to say, hey, stop this. This is what you're doing. And so in the square, they... Uh, in one of these cities, they put um, 109 um, baby buggies, right, uh, strollers, representing what they claim is the number of children that have so far been killed. Now, I don't know about you, but what, how does that make you feel? <laughs> yeah, right? And, and we might even think of this as righteous anger. This shouldn't be happening. Now, again, just to, just to make sure we don't... Um, just to, just to make sure we don't, um, you know, uh, end up being tempted to stretch the story too far, U UNICEF, uh, which is a sub-organization of United Nations, UNICEF has a way of trying to formally count in, in situations like this how many deaths have there been officially, and they know of at least 54, but whether it's 54 or 109, my gosh, you know, children, innocents. Yeah, righteous anger. And I think maybe this is what, what this, this anger stuff is all about. We certainly hear about God getting angry, right? We hear about the wrath of God, especially when these human beings, uh, the God's creatures, especially when they mm, disobey God, especially when they start taking advantage of, or, or like Cain and Abel, one killing the other, maybe envious at first, but out of anger, then striking one dead. This is the very thing that God gets angry about. And if God gets angry, and we are made in the image of God, then there's probably anger in us too if we're made like God. But what happens when that anger isn't righteous anger? Well, it becomes something else, right? <laughs> It can become a, a, an anger at rage. Uh, tell me, any of you who've been ever working at computers, you haven't wanted to do this. <laughs> right? Just sock that screen. <laughs> right? <laughs> there's, there's a rage, right? We hear about it. Road rage. You know, where does that uh, whole idea come from? Uh, well, I confess, and Joanne can be my witness, <laughs> that I get angry on the road. <laughs> And sometimes you have to say, now, come on, get your foot off that pedal. I mean, she has to, you know, help me control that anger, right? Or to make sure that I'm not doing something that's going to further antagonize the whole situation. Because it's easy to take our anger and justify it. Think that it's righteous anger, when in fact maybe it's not. It's just rage, uncontrollable. 
Well, the bishop uh, at this point, um, Bishop Ulliman, who writes the book that we've been following uh, in this whole series, Sinning Like a Christian, and Bishop Ulliman says this. He says, on the one hand, anger can be righteous indignation at injustice. In other words, it's good, right? On the other hand, anger can be that blind rage in which we see nothing but ourselves and our diminished sense of self reacting with murderous rage. And it's true. Anger can be both those things, and oftentimes is. But how do we make it one and not the other, right? So maybe, maybe it's not anger itself that's the sin, but it's what comes out of it. Now, I have to believe that anger in some ways um, has to be some kind of a, well, dare I call it a gift from God? Think about it for a moment. Where does anger start? Down here, right? And it just kind of bubbles up. <laughs> And if you just absolutely ignore that bubbling, uh, like you might ignore a bubbling pot on a stove, what's going to happen to that pot on the stove? It bubbles all over, right? Especially when you have noodles or something in it, right? <laughs> it just bubbles over and makes a heck of a mess. Well, so does anger. It'll bubble, bubble over and make a heck of a mess, right? Uh, but if one pays attention to the bubbling, right? If one learns to pay attention uh, to that which could become rage, Right? We, we call this these days um, anger management. Well, I don't know if that's anything new. We've just given language to it, right? And, and oftentimes in courts of law, the judges will order people to go get ma anger management classes because it's gotten them in trouble at work or at home or on the road or somewhere, right? But the whole point is in the anger management is pay attention to the bubbling. <laughs> when it starts making a noise, that's your hint to go over to the stove. When it's really making pretty good you know, movement when you see it on the stove, it's probably time to then turn down the temperature a little bit. But not so much that it doesn't and keep boiling. Because there's some, there are things that we ought to be angry about. And yet, as we keep it just under that boil, right, as we begin to think about that anger, and that, and that anger comes with energy, I have to believe that that energy is meant uh, as a gift, the best part of anger, right, as a gift to do something about whatever has been unjust, right? I really believe that's how it works. So, working at controlling this anger. Now, we can steal, right? <laughs> we can steal from one another. We can so overuse anger that we manipulate or we you know, cause people to so shrink and cower before us that we end up ruining relationships. We ruin situations and bring no justice to the matter. And this happens way too often. Now consider this, um, as I mentioned a moment ago uh, with, with uh, Henry and, and Kennedy, right? Uh, Paul's writing, uh, it, it's kind of fun. As he's writing, he's, he's very clear about anger, you know, being part of these, uh, this, this old way of life, and, and, and yet anger's not going to go away, right? So as he writes about it, you know, he's, he's talking about um, you know, giving up our previous way of life, uh, renew your thinking of your mind by the Spirit and clothe yourself with a new person created according to God's image in justice and holiness, right? Uh, we're not talking about taking away the anger. Therefore, after you have gotten rid of lying, each of you must tell the truth to your neighbor. Uh, again, truth sometimes stings and hurts, but not, let's not tell it in a way in which we're manipulating or making it happen or out of our anger because we are parts of each other in the same body. Be angry without sinning says Paul. Paul understands, right? He understands that it's, it's not the anger. It's what we do with it. So be angry without sinning. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. Uh, Bishop Willeman reminds us um, uh, of, of uh, kind of a funny way to put it, um, right? Don't let the sun go down on your anger. We've heard that. Uh, here's where it comes from. Um, but anybody remember Phyllis Diller? I mentioned this uh, uh, on a study group, right? Um, what did Phil Stiller say about this whole thing? Don't let the sun go down on your angry? She put it this way. Don't go to bed angry. Stay up and fight about it. <laughs> well, but the whole point is, is exactly that. Stay up and work it out. Pay attention to the bubbling, right? Get to the point 
where that anger doesn't take you in your sleep to the committee that works overtime in the night, uh, plotting and planning and, so that when you get up in the morning, you're immediately are filled with this anger and you go out right away in the day and do something you wish you wouldn't have done after it's done. Right? So don't let the sun go down with it, but pay attention to it. Find a way in resolve to, to make it right. Don't provide, says Paul, an opportunity for the devil. Because anger is one of those hook places, right? And, and then, right in the midst of this teaching, this funny saying, right? Right in the midst of this teaching, this really funny saying, thieves should no longer steal. <laughs> what the heck? I thought we were talking about anger. But it's true, isn't it? That we don't have to put a mask on to steal. We just put on anger. And when we start shouting and, 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 and getting in somebody's face, what's the immediate reaction that most of us have with anger? We shrink back from it, don't we? And, and the anger can steal from somebody else, steal their integrity, steal, you know, the trust in a relationship, right? Steal the intimacy in a relationship. Anger will do all of this. Thieves should no longer steal. Instead, they should go to work using their hands to do good so that they will have something to share with whoever is in need. Now, in other places in Paul's writings, he also writes about work. So what he says, I believe, is literally about work, but it's also about anger. Because he gets that far in the Scripture, right? And then he turns right around and continues. Uh, but don't let any foul words come out of your mouth. <laughs> Something that happens when we're angry, right? <laughs> right? Only say what is helpful when it is needed for building up the community so that it benefits those who hear what you say. Don't make the Holy Spirit of God unhappy. You were sealed by him for the day of redemption. So put aside all bitterness, losing your temper, anger, shouting, and slander, along with every other evil. And I don't know about you, but like a thief, i got to work at all that stuff. i got to work at it. i got to work at it so that it becomes something good. So I realize that I don't have to wear a mask and have a flashlight and a crowbar and a bag to be a thief. All i got to do is get angry. Be kind, says Paul and forgiving to each other in the same way that God forgave you. Oh, if I could only remember that when every time I'm angry, it might help me control the bubbling. <laughs> and then, right, and then we come to the Scripture where, um, you know, Jesus is, is with the folks and, and, they're, and they're tempting um, him by seeing if he's going to work on the Sabbath. That's one of the laws. You don't work on the Sabbath. And healing is, is a form of work, right? You don't go to the doctor and cause the doctor to work on the Sabbath. So here's this man, right, with a withered hand. And Jesus has him stretch it out and say, hey, look, is it, is it, is it good on the Sabbath to, to do this healing, to do something good? Or, or is it something that, you know, we can only judge if it's an evil thing to do it on the Sabbath? And, of course, nobody says anything, right? Is it good to do, is it okay to do good or evil on the Sabbath is, is the question. And, and nobody says anything. So he looks around at them, says the Scripture, with anger. Jesus looks around at them with anger. Jesus, what, do I need to say it again? <laughs> Looks around at them with anger, deeply grieved, says the Scripture, deeply grieved at their unyielding hearts. He's angry because their hearts are so hard, they have no sympathy for this man that's right there before them. Right there before them. So he says to the man, stretch out your hand, right? Stretch out your hand, and he does, and it's healed. And the Pharisees do what? The Pharisees and other leaders they go off to plot out of their anger, out of their threat for Jesus' demise. So we get a sense that anger is not wrong, but it's what you do with it. Now, Jesus didn't go into shouting tyrant, right? He didn't go off the deep end. He didn't jump up and down and have a fit 
You know, sometimes, you know, especially, uh, I think it's not just limited to two-year-olds, right? Uh, but we adults sometimes will have tantrums, and that's just enough to let, have people let us have our way, right? Jesus doesn't do this with his anger. Instead, he does what? The good. Instead, he does what? The just thing. Instead, he does what? What is most holy, even if it's on the Sabbath. Well, I think anger, therefore, is a gift. <laughs> it's a strange kind of gift. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a present experience in our lives from moment to moment that sometimes we wish wasn't there, but yet let's not wish it away. Because without anger, would there be any gifts sent the way of the Ukraine right now? Would there be support coming from other countries around the world if people weren't angry about the injustice of what's happening? Would, uh, would Russian officials, <laughs> who are probably feeling more and more and more isolated right now, especially as word might begin to creep into uh, the Russian public, because you realize they currently, most of the Russian public, when you, when you, they, they, they do polls just like we do polls here in the U.S. to find out how people are really thinking at home, right? And even among the polls in, in Russia, they're blaming this whole police action, they're blaming this whole military action, it's not called a war, or an invasion in their, in their news, right? They're blaming it all on the United States. <laughs> well, they're the ones that are trying to encroach on us. We've got to protect ourselves. Yeah, by killing babies. And so folks are hoping to put the other side of the coin before some of the Russian public. And they're hoping out of this anger to, to do something about it good. Not to fight back so severely that we become just like the enemy but to meet the enemy where they are in the hardness of their hearts. Because you realize sometimes that with the enemy's heart so hardened, which of any of us is ever really going to change that? None of us, but only God. We can only do what is just and holy and pray that in God's time, God will care for the hard-hearted. God will deal with the matter as God sees fit in a picture that we can't begin to wrap our heads around. We can only offer our anger as a gift of action, of love, of justice, and of holiness. That's what's required of us. So this day, as you pray about this situation and places around the world, be praying. I have no doubt that there's going to come a time in the coming weeks and maybe months um, that poor Poland, right, and a couple of the other countries, but especially Poland, who's right now being just overrun with refugees, I have no doubt that eventually the United States is going to be asked, help! <laughs> and there may be folks who don't dare go back to the Ukraine, depending on how this whole matter, you know, goes in the, in the coming weeks and months. And so there may be an appeal, right? There may be an appeal for the U.S. to open its borders for some families, would it be great if in our anger we said to someone in immigration, we'll take a family and find an apartment for them and, and, and support them as a church? Because we're angry about this injustice they have had to flee from. And then do something good about it. The gift of God in anger is just that. So let's pray for one another's boiling points. <laughs> let's pray for one another's responses and actions. Let's pray that at least for one another we can say, ah, 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 now Katie, I hear you're getting angry. Remember what happened last time. I mean, we, if we can do that for each other, for heaven's sakes, we can even save each other's souls so that we don't end up doing something that everybody regrets. But instead, help each other to live through that anger, not burying it, not putting it away as if it's bad, but listening through prayer how to direct that anger into the actions of God. Will you pray with me? Well, gracious Lord, what a hard thing it is sometimes to recognize how it is we are gifted by you. This funny thing, this, this thing called anger, oh my gosh, it... It's, it's almost like it's not controllable, but that's not true. You sent your son, 
Jesus in flesh, just like ours, flesh and bones, knowing every single desire, knowing every single temptation we know, and yet he didn't go off the deep end. Not because he was strong, but because the Spirit was upon him. Well, the Spirit's upon us too. Thank you, God. And as we give ourselves to that Spirit day in and day out, may we also be saved from sin so that we can receive the past forgiveness of sins, Lord God, that might keep us, therefore, from sins of the future. Lord, and as we share this good news with one another, oh, let's do it so loudly that the rest of the world that's teetering on the brink of anger, Lord, will be saved. We pray this in thanksgiving in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you'll stand with me, let's uh, um, re reaffirm our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed that we've been using in this season. Together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Join with me in our closing hymn this morning, Onward, Christian Soldiers. Brothers and sisters, as I send you out, uh, gosh, I wish I could do like John Wesley did. He put the hymn book together, right? In those days, it was only about so big by so big. Uh, when they had the printing presses, they still made a really small one, and they put it into the hands of the folk. So when they gathered for worship, they brought their hymn books with them from home. Well, what did they do with them at home? Sing? Well, some of them maybe did. Wouldn't be like singing in the shower that we do. Um, but their hymn books were also their prayer books. Were you listening? as you were singing those lyrics? It's not about a battle out here with guns and fire. It's about the battle in here, right? Where we know that Christ has gone on before. And as Christ has been, been perfect and perfected by God, so are we. So go with the struggles that are before us. Yeah, even that of anger. And let God perfect you by His Spirit, by His power, not by our efforts, so that 
as we are there for one another praying, we might take that energy of anger and make the world a more holy place in justice done for all. Go in his grace and peace. Amen.